everyone, and welcome to the Just Get Hired podcast. I want to welcome you guys to another exciting episode of the Just Get Hired podcast. I am your host, Jessica Fiesta George, and today we have a special guest with us who's going to drop some serious knowledge bombs. If you're new to the series, these are what I call your weekly dose of hot takes. Hot takes are short 15 to 20 minute episodes that you can watch on YouTube or Spotify. And if you don't have time to watch the video version, you can always subscribe to the Just Get Hired podcast on your favorite podcast platform and listen to the audio only. But if you want to catch the video, click that subscribe button now so that you don't miss a thing. So Hot Takes is all about the hottest takes on the hottest topics that are trending right now. And we give you spicy nuggets of information every week. So today I have Rob Hoffman with me. He's an expert in the world of branding, marketing, and all things that make a company's identity pop. He's a growth marketer who has a knack for transforming businesses by harnessing innovative data insights with a unique blend of recruiting experience and video production expertise. He's been helping talent acquisition teams and businesses boost their KPIs and also giving employers a brand through video. So his hot take today is all about exploring the captivating realm of branding, but with a twist. So we're going to go beyond the logo, diving in to the intriguing world of employer versus consumer brand. So let's bring Rob in. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Just Get Hired podcast hot takes. I am excited to have with you guys, Rob Hoffman. He is a expert when it comes to recruitment branding, and he has an awesome background in recruiting himself. So I think he's a good person to introduce this topic. His hot take is about beyond your logo, employer versus consumer branding. So I'm curious to learn more about this, but welcome to the Just Get Hired podcast. Thanks, Jess. It's really a pleasure to be here. So we're going to talk about the differences between consumer branding and employer branding, I get this all the time. People think it's one and the same. To me, it's different, but maybe in your words, maybe you can break it down for our listeners. What's the difference between consumer branding and employer branding, especially when it comes to trying to impress customers versus candidates? Sure, of course. So consumer branding is, it starts with a logo, right? It starts with the image, with the feelings that the brand evokes. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to basically have some emotional resonance with you so that you think about the product, you're attached to the product. Uh, there's a sort of consistency in branding as well through the imagery, whether it be through static or video or, or any other way that they reach a consumer through advertising, you always recognize it. You recognize those golden arches. You know what McDonald's is. There's a feeling it evokes and whether you love them or hate them, you know what they are. And, and that's certainly one of the classic brands out there. Now, employer brand is just a completely different animal, right? You know, this is right. like, we're not looking to sell this, our, our product to consumers. Well, of course we are, whatever, whatever your business is, you know, and it's B2B or B2C, it's bringing the, bringing your, the talent attraction is a completely different animal. So we've sort of like, a job has become a commodity now. You know, it, it used to be that, that basically your journey was typically 10 years, right? You wanted to stay with the job. You didn't want to be a quote unquote job hopper, right? That was a bad thing. That was a four letter word. <laughs> but to be honest with you, it's become, I think, through the use of social media, um, it, it, everyone starts understanding their value and it's just so easy to see what else is out there. Everyone's talking. Everyone knows what everyone else is making. Glassdoor is out there. They sort of pioneered this space. Uh, the Muse as well is a terrific mm -hmm. place, which, by the way, they're, they're, they're wonderful with uh, video, which is, a, which is a big part of what I do as well. That's a, that's a big part of the equation with employer branding. But right now, there's, you can either do talent traction where it's like, maybe I'm not looking, maybe I'm, a, maybe I'm a tire kicker. But when I start seeing your company's outreach, when I start seeing, whoa, what's this company all about? What, it's like, what is it like to work there? What's a day in the life? What are your values? Do they, right. do they mean something to me? Suddenly right now, if I'm maybe not necessarily so super happy with my current mm -hmm. position, now that brand is starting to speak to me and maybe my current employee, <laughs> employer brand is not uh, where right. I don't feel I'm happy here. Now, sometimes it can just be about salary, but once you have that emotional resonance, now suddenly I'm a little more interested I'm, and the buy-in is starting to take place here where I'll start really considering applying 
for 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 a role at your, at your at your business or accepting an offer. And that's really why it's so important right now because everyone is plugged in these days and everyone understands that I don't just accept a job offer blindly like you used to do. Well, the money's right, right? They hit my salary requirements, so therefore I'll accept this job because hey, I'm making more money here. But it's a mm-hmm. lot deeper than that. So that's that's the reason why employer brand and 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 obviously talent acquisition teams are starting to get on board they have for years not everyone gets it yet uh, but that's the reason why branding your company is is so important to be competitive especially in a competitive job market which by the way it's a little soft right now that yeah. that's a whole another thing the, the job market's a little soft and, and i think in the end that softness is you you're you're seeing a lot less um emphasis on employer brand at this one moment right now but we mm-hmm. all know this is cyclical it will get competitive again. And when it does, if you're not ready, that's that's when you're going to pay the price because as as basically job candidates start looking around, if you don't have the proper presence out there, you don't have the, the proper message, that's when you're going to lose out. Yeah. Well, you know, I think those Instagram ads always get me because, you know, you start looking through social media, you're scrolling, you're scrolling. And the ones that I see where all the employees are having fun and there's like smiling people and, you know, you're sitting at work at your desk at home or wherever, and you're like having a bad day. You're thinking my job sucks, (laughs) you know, oh, look at these people. They're having a great time. You know, let me scroll and figure out who, what is this company? So I think there's a lot of employers who are catching on that, you know, you got to go where your audience is and you've got to, you know, um, just put the different messages out there because slowly, but surely it's going to leak into you know, their brain, and then they'll think of you when it comes time to look for another job, right? Yeah. And the funny thing is also, as we all become aware, as those targeted ads, you know, and obviously there's organic, which, which, uh, you know, your employer brand can, can work that, that way as well. And there's paid media as well. And obviously targeting has become so sophisticated now that these ads will find you. Um, but it's yes. really interesting how it used to be the coffee bar um, and the ping pong table, which was the, right. the big attractions. Uh, obviously, a lot of people working from home. But even when you're not working from home, if you've been mm-hmm. in an office that's had a ping pong table, you're not the person getting up and playing on that ping pong table in the middle of the day exactly. and making all that <laughs> racket. So I think right now the values uh, of job seekers is evolving. Um, and right now there's sort of like a real nod towards diversity. That's really important to a, to a lot mm-hmm. of people, uh, really your brand's mission as well. But these are all things that, once again, can be conveyed. And whether you're going for the coffee bar or whether you're going for the diversity, whatever your value is, you'll see it if if you're if that company is reaching out with with a with a positive employer brand message. You sure. know, there's another thing also. There's the talent attraction angle, but there's the employee mm-hmm. retention angle as well. And as crazy as it sounds, sometimes you need to sort of be reminded of what your company's all about because a job is a job, right? It's still work. You right. got hired, you're getting paid to work and it's not always fun. So sometimes you what I see really great companies, they will put out, and once again, video being me being a producer, I really, I, I love this angle. It's more than just video, but video is a big part of it. When they drop a video, it gets shared and reposted over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. And that message is just broadcast and, and it's sort of like an exponentially broadcasted out where all of your colleagues, all of your friends, they're reposting, they're reminding you, you're sharing it as well with, with, your, with your colleagues outside of outside of the circle of the company itself and, and even attracting more talent. And I think in the end, that, that gives you, that reminds you of the community that we're in, especially when you're working remotely. Hey, we're part of a big team. This and what, what we're doing over here is awesome. Uh, and that helps as well. Sometimes it's not always tangible, the ROI. Um, mm-hmm. Although if you really dig deep into the numbers, it is there. You know, right. the numbers are there. Um, <laughs> you know, and it's one of those things where, you know, I'm going to kind of look at some of my key metrics here. But you, the numbers are out there that mm-hmm. um, companies right now are, are heavily invested in, are starting to invest in video. Um, if they're not doing it now, they're, they're planning on doing it. The results of, you, if you talk to the hiring managers, if you talk to the talent acquisition teams that are using a successful strategy, uh, they will all tell you it's, it's, a, it's a winning one. You know, the, the time to hire is, is the time is decreased. Uh, the retention is also, is, is those numbers are typically increased as well. Um, the economics of, of actually creating a, a video message 
uh, mm -hmm. is sometimes the, those walls can be pretty high and people get really scared by that. Um, but there are lots of methods of creating video, whether it's user generated content, those are authentic messages. Uh, if you produce them properly, uh, right. they can be amazingly powerful. If you produce them, you know, it basically just sort of like, well, here you go. Just, just follow this script, send us this video in, whether we're using some tech platform that's just going to broadcast this out. And there are some tech platforms out there for user generated content, which are, which are pretty, um, they seem like they'd be an effective message, but they're not necessarily so because you're not getting well-produced video. But regardless, the uh, the walls can be m lowered through an effective means of producing content with mm -hmm. a microphone that works properly with a with a good camera. Uh, you don't have to have a professional crew, but it does help to to professionally produce video. And when you do produce the proper video at your budget, you will see the ROI. It's been proven over and over and over again. And I don't know if it's one of those things here where I could send you, I could send you <laughs> some uh, links to 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 a lot of research that's out there. But the KPIs, if you're willing to do your research, are there. That video does pay off as as a means for talent attraction. Well, there's so many awesome phones out there now. So I mean, you can get good quality too without having to hire. Obviously, recommend if you're at a company, hire a professional team. But there's some great things that you can do if you're small budget, like a small mom and pop and can't afford like a, a huge production. There's great technology out there now. You can use AI, you can use your phone, there's different apps available. So um, I think video is definitely the way to go because you can always repurpose that content too um, and make it audio. You can turn them into blogs. There's so many different avenues that we can go down the road when it comes to branding. And Jess, I don't even want to say it's just mom and pop that have these issues. I speak mm -hmm. with multi-billion dollar companies that mm -hmm. tell me our budget for employer <laughs> brand is zero, zero point zero zero zero. We we don't have the money. Yeah, you know, we, we it's it's not allocated right now. Budget freeze, what what have you? This isn't important. It's not a priority, even though hiring is always a priority. But you know, it it it, it runs the gamut. Um, yeah. What I can tell you is uh, there are a million tips here, yes, to do things on the cheap and do them well. Uh, I have a microphone here. This happens to be my backup microphone uh, because my primary one just, just failed recently. Um, I bought this thing on eBay for 60 bucks, you know, when I was just getting into uh, basically doing some voiceover work. Uh, originally, I was doing it because I was, you know, because I produce video. Um, mm -hmm. But you realize here, yeah, this is this is just my iMac here. That's I'm using the camera here. I'm lighting it properly. I'm getting some natural light from a window over here. There's a couple of techniques. You know, backlight. You know, you you, you have a, a a background here. Sure, I set this up. I staged all these wonderful pictures of my family and friends and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. It looks wonderful. I got my books here, and you can kind of read into who I am. You don't have to do that. There's but there's all these just little tips here that you can do stuff with your iPhone. Do it properly. Um, not right. everyone wants to be on camera. Not everyone's comfortable. Um, so when you are, if you are basically searching for content amongst your employees, um, not everyone's going to do it right. And the worst thing you can do is give them a script. And I, I see that. And when people are looking this way, I think this job is great because this is like, it's just painful. Um, but there's always a couple of naturals in, 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 you know, someone who's gregarious, someone who just, you know, shines in front of the camera. And some people need a little prodding. And the beautiful thing is, uh, Jess, as we discussed before this podcast, the ability to edit is a wonderful Editing thing. Editing is a wonderful thing. But so when we think, though, of like good employer brands, what logos come to mind for you? Oh, the logo, you, you know. I don't think like, logos. Who does it well? Employer brand is not about the logo. Uh, I think consumer brands, it's huge. Well, true. Um, but okay, when you think of employers who are doing it well, I guess I should rephrase, is what companies come to mind when you think of uh, what someone come that's to mind? doing it right? I, I, I can, I've got a few people, I've got a few companies here, which, uh, which I've flagged. State Farm does, does, a, does a wonderful, wonderful job. Ernst & Young, terrific. Cummins. The the uh, diesel engine manufacturer, wonderful, okay. wonderful work, you know, and there's different ways of doing it. It's not one mm -hmm. size fits all. 
But when there's an authentic message out there, when you have employees that really say, hey, I'm passionate about this job. This is really cool place to work and here's why. And you do it properly and you get that message out there. It really, really, really resonates with the job seeker. Now, there's lots of different levers, you know, where once again, you have to build up that reputation on all the different boards out there where people are going to do the research. Once again, Glassdoor being one of them. And in a mm -hmm. certain way, you know, there's nothing about branding and marketing. In the end, I could, I could come up with the most brilliant marketing campaign for a really crappy product, and it's still going to be a crappy product. Um, True. You know, it's still not going to necessarily, you can fake it, um, but people are still going to be, be posting on, on, on these review boards and saying, no, this place is horrible. It's a toxic work environment. It's X, Y, and Z. You know, why it's terrible. Now, there's always going to be haters out there. There's always going to be some complaints. No one has a five-star review for everything. I think we're all savvy enough to know when you start looking at reviews and you see how many are out there and the general consensus in one direction or the other, you're going to have a hard time overcoming that. That's something that comes from within with, with a mm -hmm. company. But if you have a solid reputation, you know, there, there are certain companies out there where everyone knows about them, right? You know, right. it's like, all right, well, I already know Apple. I want to work for them no matter what. I don't even care what people say. You know, I'm, I'm a fanboy and I, I want to be there. So you don't really have to worry so much about it. The, the, the reputation just sort of precedes the company. A lot of companies out there that no one's ever heard of before, right? You mm -hmm. know, and and all the more reason why to to state your mission, say why it's great to work here, is really important to help make the sale. And in a competitive job market, that's going to matter when it's company A, which everyone knows about, which is a household name, and company B, which is just sort of like some random company that I've never heard of before. But if you can kind of convince me, this is a wonderful place to work. We can talk about the benefits. We can talk about the future. We talk about all those things. Those things can all mm -hmm. be sort of incorporated into the employer brand message. As I'm starting to do my research, when the recruiter reaches out to me, who are these guys? Who, what, what's right. their deal? All right, now I'm intrigued. And, and now I want to continue the conversation. So, you know, the companies I mentioned happen to do things right, and they do video really, really well, professionally produced. But there's other ones that, that that I've seen where they've stacked up, you know, you know, user generated content and do did it properly on the cheap, and it still can be a powerful message. Um, you know, that helps. You know, where where you can yeah. have a lot, of, whether it's the stakeholders or, or or just just a lot of the employees, just just saying, hey, this is what it's all about. Well, you mentioned like Glassdoor, the Muse. I know, uh, you know when as a recruiter, when candidates, I reach out to about a position, I know the first thing, because the first thing I do whenever I'm researching a company is I go to, first I go to see their LinkedIn presence. I also go to Glassdoor and Indeed, kind of read the reviews, day in the life. Um, and if all you're seeing is negative, 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 what is the company doing to shift the message to show, you know, what they're addressing? You know, why are people talking about it? How are they addressing the negative reviews and the comments? You know, and I like to see, even though, I mean, not every company is going to be perfect. I get it. But, you know, I like to see engaged employers who are responding to comments or they're, you know, taking a spin on, um, you know, some of the things that people perceive to be negative about the company and showing that they're improving the message and their story. So I like to see that. So I think it's truly important for any company, um, you know, like you had mentioned, you don't have to be a big name brand like Apple or anything like that. If you are a, you know, small company, what a great way to showcase, you know, why you're better than the big dogs. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it does come from within, right? So if you've got a problem, it, it really truly comes from within, from the CEO on down, you know, C-suite leadership. If you, if you've got a, if you've got a culture issue, uh, or, or, a leadership issue, it, it comes from the top. And, Absolutely. but once again, branding is only going to help you so much, but if you're starting to turn things around and you recognize we have a problem here, you know, why yeah. are we getting all these reviews? Is this important to us? You know, and, and there's a churn and burn kind of mentality that some companies have. You see, it, especially when you, when you are doing recruiting, which, which I did for many years as well, you have mm -hmm. certain clients and you realize, wow, they're, they're a great client. And I realize why. It's mm -hmm. kind of not great to work there. And they're just <laughs> constantly doing the turnover and they're pouring the money in to get to get the recruiters keep shoving people down there down down the pipeline. And sure, that's 
nominally effective, but it's just so much easier if you build up the company as a great place to work and then people want to stay. And then once again, the, 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 it, it's this whole sort of holistic 360 degree thing here. And then when the talent acquisition team is equipped with a, with a proper employer branded message, it helps then the people want to stay. They found you, they, they, they were sort of, in, you know, intrigued, motivated by the message that, that, that is being broadcast out there as a place that I want to work. I want to respond to this recruiter's outreach. I want to apply for this job. Um, right. so that's, that's the proper way to do it. Sure. You want to, you want to basically toot your own horn when you're doing things right. Um, and this is, this is the way to do it, especially if you, if you've been dinged in the reputation department, but Hey, we're yeah. turning things around and, and address it, you know, e e yeah. even as, as part of the message as well. Absolutely. Well, Rob, I can't believe this time has already come to an end. I think we can actually have a longer conversation about this topic because there's so many little nooks and crannies I don't even think we were able to get to. But uh, I appreciate your hot take and thank you for being a part of the Just Get Hired podcast. Thanks, Jess. It's wonderful to be here. Really appreciate it.